and the world road racing champion, the phenomenal Kenny Roberts. Never ever thought about doing anything else. I worked in a shop when I was 14, 15 years old, just to be around motorcycles. Kenny Roberts was just 21 years old when he became the U.S. Grand National Champion, the youngest champion ever. To win the national championship, you have to compete in four totally different types of racing. TT, short track, mile and half mile dirt track ovals, and road racing. From the very beginning, Kenny was great on the 135 mile per hour fairground dirt ovals. On the twisty TT course, nobody could touch him. But he had little experience at road racing. The fastest and most dangerous type of racing there is. To try to help Roberts, his sponsors asked former world road racing champion Kel Carruthers to give the kid a hand. I, I can watch uh, what he's doing, I can watch what other riders are doing. And uh, I think Kenny is one of the few riders that does the right thing virtually all the time. Kenny had had little opportunity to road race, so he followed Carruthers around the tracks, learning what he could from the champion. But after only a couple of races following Kel around, Kenny started winning and leaving his tutor behind. His natural ability and dirt track aggressiveness made Roberts an instant road race superstar in the United States. His sensational knee-dragging style endeared him to the fans. In all, he won 28 national championship races, more than any other man in history. And that's why they call him King Kenny. With no challenges remaining, Roberts left the dirt tracks of America behind and went to Europe to compete against the best in the world. To Europeans, road racing is more an obsession than a sport. Some of the major races attract over 300,000 spectators. There are so many fans, they have to set up TV monitors for those who can't get close enough to see the race. I'm stationed with the United States Air Force, and about a year ago when I read that Kenny was coming over to contest the World Championship, I extended my enlistment so I could stay and watch him compete. The Europeans didn't consider Roberts much of a threat. It took years to learn the different circuits well enough to even attempt to try to win. On the Isle of Man, the course wanders through 38 miles of backcountry roads and villages with more than 180 turns per lap. Since the first race in 1907, more than 100 lives have been lost. You had to race them many times to learn them well enough to win. No American dirt tracker was going to master this sophisticated European sport overnight. Even his sponsors didn't expect him to make much of a showing his first season. But they all forgot to tell Kenny he wasn't supposed to win. In the first three out of five races, Roberts blew him away. And the proud Europeans didn't like it. One thing. Uh, the other thing is that they, they wouldn't talk to me. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, tell me why they didn't pay me. So I don't have to take the trophy. If I have to race here, which they say I have to, then I have to race it, but I don't have to take the trophy. If they're going to be, if they're going to treat me that shitty, 
You know, I don't need the trophy. Kenny kept on racing and winning. He beat him in Austria, smoked him in England, and roosted him in Germany and Italy. His legend grew. The Europeans just didn't want to believe that an American rookie could do that to him. In Europe, the race goes on no matter what the weather. And because when it rains in the States, the races are stopped, Roberts had zero experience riding under these conditions. Kenny didn't have a rain tire, and the European manufacturers refused to sell him any of their secret computer-designed rain treads. But this didn't stop Kenny. He cut his own by hand from his racing slicks and won the first time out, totally demoralizing the rest of the riders. I don't like... Uh... No, it's... rain is not good for racing. Do you like racing in the rain? Yes. You do? <laughs> Why? Oh, I cannot explain. Maybe because I never crash. Kenny Roberts raced the entire European GP circuit. And when the season was over, this young American superstar had won an incredible 12 out of the 18 races and the coveted title, World Road Racing Champion. But perhaps his greatest triumph was winning the respect and admiration of the European riders and fans. Even the man he dethroned, two-time world champion, Englishman Barry Sheen. He's an exceptional rider, and I like racing with Kenny because he's, he's clever, he's very, very skillful. There's a lot of guys that go quick, but I hate racing with them because you get alongside them and they don't give you any room, don't cut you any slack, as they say in America. And Kenny's not like that. I can race with Kenny, and if I beat him, I beat him through going quicker than he did. And if he beats me, he beats me through going quicker than I did. You know, there's no shutting the door and pushing me out or any kind of stuff like that. So in his first year on the circuit, known as the World Series of Road Racing, King Kenny came home with all the roses. First year coming to England, to Europe, to race. Nobody really expected you to do well. I mean, everybody kind of felt, well, here's a cocky young Yank that really doesn't gonna, he does well in the States, but he's not gonna do too well in Europe. Well, I proved I was a cocky young Yank. I uh, also proved that uh, we could road race. The thing about going to Europe um, was that they didn't expect me to do well because I was the first year there and uh, I had tires that had never ridden in Europe, Goodyear had never been to Europe, so that's why they didn't expect me to do good. I didn't know the racetrack. What about the other rider? What about Sheen? How, how did they take it to you? Well, Sheen was doing all the winning before I got there and doing all the talking. So all I had to do was start showing some results and then keep him talking and uh, he would eventually psych himself out, as it turns out, and uh, be so psyched out that he was letting riders beat him without, without even his talent. Uh, first time you raced in the rain, a lot of people thought you were completely crazy, yet you did very well. Well, the first time I raced in the rain, I raced in Europe in the match races, and uh, I won. <laughs> so, of course, they knew I was crazy. I confirmed it the second time I raced in the rain, and I fell off right down the main straight, about 130 miles an hour, insisting that I had to set the track record in the dry just to show them that I could could do it. And uh, in front of uh, thousands of people, uh, doing my slide on my back and slide on my foot and slide on my butt for a while, uh, and they were all awed at this. They didn't, uh, here I am right in front of them crashing, and I hit the hay bales and the bike bounced across the track, and well, I got up. Wow, that was neat. All these people <laughs> looking down on me going, they just didn't say nothing. And I saw one girl look at her boyfriend and say, he is really crazy, isn't he? <laughs> Some would say you're an Iron Man in racing. Do you consider yourself an Iron Man? Well, I'm not scared of anything I can see, anything I can do personally. Um, it's the beyond, I don't know. Now, take me skin diving where there's just a big black wall out there, and I know a fish wants to eat me. <laughs> I know there's a fish out there that wants to eat me. I don't want to be down there. It scares me to death. I couldn't do it. But 180 miles an hour on a motorcycle in the rain no doesn't frighten you. No problem. No. Absolutely no problem. That's why I do it.
After the winter break, our hero Kenny Roberts was preparing to return to Europe to defend his road racing title. His sponsor had designed a new motorcycle for him, and Kenny went to Japan to test it. Then, six weeks before the first Grand Prix, disaster struck. There was a, a real fast right-hand corner coming onto the straight. It's a Yamaha test course. And um, as I entered the turn, maybe 120 miles an hour, the front wheel went away from me. And uh, next thing I knew, I was up against the uh, guardrail. And uh, I hit the guardrail with, with my back. And uh, at that, I paralyzed the insides, ruptured my spleen, uh, fractured my left foot, and uh, I had a compression of the 12th, 11th and 12th vertebrae. And they went in and operated on the spleen and uh, put me in a cast, a couple of casts, and in three weeks uh, sent me home. Everyone thought Kenny was through, but just six weeks after his near-fatal crash, he was back on the track and ready to race. No one thought Roberts would be physically strong enough or psychologically prepared to do battle with the men who wanted to take his title away from him. He was going to face four major problems during the upcoming season. One, even when at his best, Roberts was not good when push starting his bike in the European-style run and bump. Robert's second problem was Will Hartog, the Dutchman. Third, Englishman Barry Sheen, who desperately wanted his title back. And Kenny's fourth problem was the handsome and daring Italian, Virginio Ferrari. Now, with his serious injuries, the weakest part of his talent would be magnified. In a sport where a tenth of a second can mean the difference between winning and losing. The thought that this could happen again while his back was still broken would make the average rider hang it up. Sheen had won the first race while Roberts had been confined to his bed back home, still recovering. But Kenny rejoined the Continental Circuit at the second Grand Prix at the Salzburg Ring in the panoramic hills of Austria. <laughs> Everybody thought Kenny had just come to watch. They were shocked when he put his leathers on over a back brace and was going to try and race. On the first lap, Kenny tucked right in behind the leader Ferrari, but nobody expected him to be able to keep up the pace. They didn't think a man could come back so soon after such an injury. Breaking my back was something for me to overcome, to make me go on, to make me better than I was before, Roberts told him. Before the race, they'd asked him if he was going to ride as hard as he used to. He told him, nope, I'm going to ride harder. Roberts did pass Ferrari and the two of them ran away from the rest of the field. Kenny won the race, once more doing what the Europeans didn't believe could be done. One of the colorful villages they visit on the circuit is Imola, where the Italian Grand Prix is held. Imola moves as slow as a bocce ball until race day. They're all here at Imola. The Polish picnickers. Russians in their motorhome. And the proper British.
Virginio Ferrari is idolized by his countrymen. He is a fearless rider. Ferrari was leading Roberts on points by Emola, 34 to 27. He was the passionate Italian fan's great hope for a world championship. His back still weak, Roberts got off to the slow start he'd expected, but he made up ground fast. By just the fourth lap, he passed Hartog, taking the lead. By the time he crossed the finish line, he had lapped most of the field and showed the Italians that Roberts was back. On to the Dutch Grand Prix in Holland, a country taken from the sea. And every June, the town of Assen is given back to a sea of motorcycles. Champion road racers are national heroes, and their faithful fans spend thousands of dollars to dress like them. Here we have Mr. and Mrs. Kenny Roberts, Mr. and Mrs. Barry Sheen, Hartog Jr., Ms. Dave Aldena, a frogman, another Mrs. Sheen. and Mr. and Mrs. Marlon Brando. Dutchman Will Hartog was the heavy crowd favorite at Assen. You must be the tallest racer around. You're much, Roberts is like this and you're so tall. I'm sorry and I think that's the reason I'm not world champion this year. <laughs> From the start, Sheen took the lead, but the lanky Hartog passed him on the first lap, much to the pleasure of the partisan fans. Robert struggled along in eighth place. His suspension had failed, causing his bike to shudder terrifyingly on the fast bends. When it wobbles like that, you don't do nothing, Robert said. You don't sneeze, you don't hiccup, you don't even breathe. All you do is hang on. And soon he was nearly a lap behind Hartog. Ferrari was on their tails. First he picked off Sheen, then Hartog, leading his way around the twisty five-mile Assen circuit. Sheen pressured Ferrari for the full 90 miles, but his bid fell short by one-tenth of a second. Ferrari won the second Grand Prix of his young career. Following Sheen, Hartog had taken third to uphold Dutch honor. But more significantly, Ferrari had moved ahead of Roberts into the World Championship points lead. In the end, it came down to the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Winning here would mean the World Championship for either Roberts, Sheen, Ferrari, or Hartog. Robert set the fastest lap in practice, but when the front row lined up for the start, he was missing. He had somehow met trouble on the warm-up lap. There he was, behind the grid, Carruthers and the other mechanics working furiously on the bike. Kenny had popped a wheelie on the warm-up lap and popped a clutch seal. Both he and the bike were coated with oil. The seal had to be replaced. The race would start in minutes, with or without him. Give me one of those pants. Yeah. Mind your eyes. Yeah. Leave it more over to the left. Time 36, Kenny. 
The seal was replaced and most of the oil wiped off. Roberts pushed the bike through the grid to a start in the pole position with only seconds to spare. They didn't know whether the seal would last for the length of the race. How would you like to be sitting on the front row, your bike covered with oil, your mechanic yelling at you, it's not right, and in less than 30 seconds, you'll be going 180 miles an hour. Hartog had used his long legs to get a perfect run and bump start. He spurted into the lead as they swept around the bend called Maggot's Curve. By the end of the first lap, both Sheen and Roberts had caught up. Kenny was reminded of the shaky oil seal every time his hand slipped off the handlebars because of the oil on his gloves. The pits had signaled that Ferrari blew his engine. Now the world title was down to three. For 10 laps, Hartog led Sheen and Roberts, but they ran away from him, and now it was down to two. It became a terrific battle between the Englishman and the American. Kenny had the lead on the last lap, and Sheen planned his move on the last turn, a 130 mile per hour sweeper. As they approached it, he took his best shot, but it missed by a wheel. And Kenny Roberts was once again the world champion.